TechRabbit here. Welcome to the TechRabbit Data Center workshop. Yeah. So anyway, in this video we're going to um, install a dual port um, SFP module uh, network card in the server. So I thought I'd show how that but, um, works. So we actually we do have two servers. So do this one in a little bit more detail and then we'll do the other one faster. And um, the instructions are actually available so you can just um, go and download them. I've, I've put in the description the type of server I have and, and, and the type of network card and, and the SFP module if you're interested in those details. Anyway, now it's mainly just to get them installed. And then, um, yeah. Also thinking maybe power up and see if we can see the card and the module. So let's um, cover. Um, if you have one of these servers, you'll probably get one or two Razer cards. This server came with one. need to check is it for does it need this low profile back uh, back end and as you see it needs the full length back, back end so I have to change that and it looks like it's can use I mean, basically you can put it in any of those slots I'm going to use the middle one so it matches this um, Slot. So anyway, I'll get this um, back end changed. So when you want to actually remove the back plate, then <laughs> it's a kind of interest. So you click that in, you push it down, and then you push it up, and then you can um, lift that. And that also means that you can put the cord in. So I got it changed now. I would just like to comment those that have changed these before that there's a you know, thin metal formed sheet there which is like cut into shreds so that's the easy end protection and it's extremely easy when when you're putting on this here to actually damage that metal so I actually did it on one of these cards um, where I actually succeeded in pushing off that probably can't see it in the camera so I succeeded in crimping up that ECM protection. I mean I don't think it really matters when it's a home gamer deal and you only have one server very unlikely to have any technical meaning whatsoever but, but um, so you should just take care you don't just accidentally crumple it up. So let's see if we can put the card. Oh. 
flops around somewhere. There. Anyway. I think I got there. That's at the second slot. And this is a tool less so I'm gonna bring that one down and then you click that one back. There's no extra power connections. So that should be theoretically done. And then this goes back. And there's a unit into here, I hope. So, theoretically done. Let's check the connectors. No. Nah, uh -huh. see, didn't get it in. So that feels like it's So I took a look from here just to uh, make sure that um, the module eraser was in place. So now it should be okay. Those are locked. And then you see that the cover goes back on again. Another indicator the one has everything in place. fiber optic modules. I'm only going to populate one of the one of them. Oh, it's now plugged in. So now I'm just going to um, rig up with some power and other things so we can actually unboot this one up and see if we can see the card module. I'm not exactly sure how it turns up but we will hope that it does. So I got it ready to boot. So I've got a VGA to HDMI adapter. Presented that in one of my previous videos. I'm interested in it. I just have a keyboard connected. A mouse. Yeah, and then this requires power, so I just take it from the USB there. And then I've got the mains cord connected. And the HDMI artist to my uh, TV here in the workshop. So. Anyway, so I'm going to boot this up, and then I'll bring it back when I'm in the operating system. Oh, it looks okay. This is on Windows Server. And um, as we see, this is the device manager, and it says that we have uh, two ports, um, 10 gigabit. Now, the thing is that in the device manager, it's not showing what... Um, physical media adapter you have and if the physical media adapter is active or not but you now that that um, it actually showed it in the um, the boot sequence of the BIOS and the initialization of all the all the stuff there and um, so I think I'm going to actually rerun the boot and capture that so you can actually see, because there it reported both the the uh, interface card and um, and it says that one of them is enabled and one of them is disabled. So that means that the because I only put one module in, them, that it showed that the well, the one port had a more active module. So anyway, let's do a reboot and um, I'll like chop it up and so show the actual boot message.
Here we go. So adapt to zero for the enable F1 disabled. So. And this is the Q logic control. So now we have to we're gonna move over to the next server and actually I forgot to say this one is um Ubuntu server. So we'll see how it um, reports the card and the modules in in uh, Linux. Um, as you see, I really need to get in contact with the fabrication department. They can't keep on dumping their welding equipment on my servers. That's not okay. So, here comes the second server. The RAID core is connected into the bottom port. Well, it's not going to be that easy to okay, so the RAID core takes that place and it's not even in its slot correctly. Oh, I can't even photograph. I can't even video that. Did I cause that? It slipped out. Might have been me. Okay, anyway. Good side trick we did. So, there we are. And that's the second. Hard, oh, not that much space around. So, what I'm going to have to do is to take that covering plate and move it there, I think. Or. I could put it on this side with a short profile. So, but it would be better to have that cap colored, covered up for cooling reasons. Okay, I'll get that adjusted. <laughs> it's not easy to film in this, but I, I got the plate move to the to cover the this one here. And then I got the card here at the top. That's the correct PCI slot. And for that I need to do the I need to change the um, to change the back plate because it's the default and it's the short. I'm going to show. Is 
not drop screws. Some kind of a table, not the best one. Other than nothing. Mm -hmm. Screws up. Oof. <laughs> I think I'm getting too tired. Anyway, so when we take that off, oh, it comes off so nicely. But then you see that, those ridges there, that's a thin plate, as you can hear. And when we try and put the this one on, uh, right way around, of course, we need to be very careful when we slot it back on again. No way, you got to be kidding me. Video effect. <laughs> now that fitted perfectly. Okay, I have had two cards where those uh, the slots or the holes for these connectors are so tight that in in one of the cards I ruined one of that EMC protection, and in the other card, by being extremely careful, I got it. I got it on, but this. <laughs> <laughs> this one slid on like I can no problem. Oh man. Oh well, that's life. Anyway, I hope you will actually not have to experience the not well fitting holes because I was not easy to get on. I actually ah, as I said I broke one. I didn't, the car didn't break. What I did is I took the plate that uh, I removed the EMC shield around because this metal um, sheet goes around this connector so you can actually pull it out. So, let me change to the high back plate. So now I can, and it's uh, so sad I can't film this properly. There's no way. I don't want to twist this too bad because it has the RAID controller on a PCI slot here. So it's got cables connected to it. There we go. Slot it in. The same trick with the other sort. Secure that. Now I need to take my protection away. And then that should sit down there. This is a bit nerve wracking because if I screwed up the raid control or something, then we are screwed because this will not boot. So let's see if I can um, get the cover off. Looks perfectly okay. Oh. 
No. Oh. I mean, these poor things, they've gone through a bit of a tough life, both transport-wise. I'm living in a... <laughs> Not exactly correct rack. So, that's that. And then, um, do the same thing here we're just on prepare this for boot and I'll come back when there's something to see Really know what it's trying to do. I assume that it's trying to. Boot from the network? That's the 
<laughs> raid control I ripped out with, without noticing. <laughs> Being clumsy as I was, I didn't notice there was a third card in that razor. So that was not so cool when it ended up being in my hand. Oh, something's happening. Okay, this is uh, U-Boom to um, Ludin, so let's see if it can actually clear it. A little bit of an indication we have a Q-Logic card, but not as clear as on the other side. There's no guarantee what configuration the card had on it, the NIC, when I installed it. Some of these advanced um, server networking cards, so you can configure them to boot from from the network, like on the card. So then it tells the operating system to wait until it's tried to boot from where it's supposed to boot. But it seemed to have just timed out and continued, so now it's loading. Loading uh, Ubuntu server going through the processes and um, that means the RAID controller is still alive. We saw it try to possibly load firmware um, for the NIC, so we'll see. Just going to join this server to the wired network. I'm going to keep this one running.
Oh, that's not, that's not gonna hold. Yeah, right. Get rid of that network too. So, got a network temporarily. I don't know what it's trying to do now. Or, ha! There we were, sitting around waiting for nothing. I just dumped some uh, kernel message on top of, top of the login, so okay. I'll be back when I got the stats for the court. Um, so how do we see if the um, card is recognized? So let's um, I'm gonna show you a few commands. I mean, I know the text is relatively small, but I, I'm gonna put these commands in the comment of the video also. And, um, you can't see what's on here. It's not a very big deal. Oh, let's take list. Oh. Oh, list PCI. And here we get a list of everything that's on the PCI bus. Bus is. Yeah. Um. Ah. Save a bit of time so we don't have to browse through this list. Uh, we'll need to be. Um, looking for these entries. And as I said, I'll copy this into the comments. So then you know that the, um, the actual card is found on the PCI bus. <laughs> Got another, another long list in a little bit different format. But it um, actually will show you even like more clearly if you have the card on the PCI bus. So that's just a very boss um, version of the default form. Uh, then there's two um, commands where you can actually um, you can use uh, UDM ADM if you look at the um, card details on a relatively low level. So I, I put that as an example, but I won't write it in. I didn't find this command this this information to be super useful. It's it's yet again just one one diagnostic view one could use just to see that the cards there. Oh, anyway, here's a much more useful list. Uh, so we take the um, virtual file system and we cap the content of the procnet dev file 
and this basically gives a list of all the um, network devices. And um, then you can see them, you can see it there and there are the, um, this is the network part. Because it has two ports on it. So. See anything else of interest? Yeah, I'd like to mention that Now, uh, this is interesting because they, you know, anybody who's worked with networking on, on um, Linux, they, you, you will um, basically take ifconfig or something similar to, to list the um, configured network device. Uh, and then I will be so surprised that there isn't anything that looks like our new added network card. Because the, these are all like, there's, the, there's Docker, that's a fake one. Then you have the loop back, and then the actual motherboard on this server has four uh, gigabit um, uh, network ports of which one is in use. Now, uh, based on what I read online, or I have researched, that when you have this fiber link uh, with an F SPF module, once you've activated the fiber link, like you plugged in the fiber and um, it's able to communicate over it. Inclu Sometimes there is has been a comment that it it will need to be able to retrieve an IP address, and then it will put it in this list. That's just for information. But um, once it's configured in um, this list, IF, IF config list, you see it here, then you can use the F tool slash M with the name of the device. And if the card driver supports it, it will actually show the information about the, the, the status of the modules plugged into the card but it, it, it requires that the driver will support it. So, um, yeah, the mileage may vary. Some vendors have, like, I found a few vendors' sites where you can actually download code to add, to patch a kernel to get it to do this. Um, so I actually don't know if the driver, the default driver that's installed, um, and activated actually it supports this type of um, information retrieval. But there was an example of what it looked like, and it was quite useful. You, go, you it gives all the information about about the um, both uh, if if you plugged in two of the F, F, SFP plus modules, and it gives all the information about, it, and then it tells you if they're active or not. So anyway, I hope you found that useful. Um, so now we've got two servers, one running Windows Server and another one running Ubuntu Server with the cards installed. And it looks like the hardware is recognized and it looks like the drivers load. Of course we don't know if they work because that will be for a later episode when I actually plug in the fiber optic patch cables and see if we can get some communication going on. And this is at least the, what the basic setup looks like. So anyway, if you thought this was useful, hit the like button. Um, buy me a cup of coffee if you like. Help me do this work. Um, links are in the description, also for merch. And if you're interested in this kind of fiddling, then um, follow up in the upcoming videos.